United States of America. What a vast country it is. 48 states rich with natural resources. Our natural resources consist of the waterfalls that furnish power, the great forests from which come our lumber, the natural waterways that carry commerce, the rich soil to produce food, the fish from our water, the minerals in the ground. Perhaps the most important single institution in our society is the home. The plastic years of a child's life here, where parents can furnish the security and sympathy so necessary to the growth of human personality. Experience has shown, however, that in modern society, other ages, like the church and school, must supplement the home and help with the all-important task of training youth for a confusing and complicated society. To aid the home, church, and school, other programs have been created such as that offered by the Boy Scouts of America. By coming into scouting as a cub at nine years of age, a boy enters upon a series of experiences that carry him through adolescence to voting citizenship. As the young man progresses through his formative years, he will find new and more interesting scout adventures ahead, until at 21, he faces the world as an adult citizen. Scout groups are sponsored by local institutions led by local volunteers. Scouting is, therefore, a part of the neighborhood or community where it operates. Thus, the movement reaches into the whole fabric of American life. A committee is formed by each institution using the scout program. As a result of the planning of this committee, activities are made available to boys under trained volunteer leadership. All of the scouting activities in the institution are integrated by the committee, which meets at regular intervals to discuss plans and consider reports from the Cub Master, Scout Master, and Sea Scout Skipper.
any nine-year-old boy is eligible to become a cub, and most every boy will enjoy what cubbing offers. It is a program that includes things that boys like, action, handicraft, ceremony, mystery, and ideals are combined in a way that appeals to boys. Centered on the backyard and provides them with constructive activities, the boy learns to find adventure in his own immediate surroundings, to make activity out of what he finds at hand. The fun of cubbing is irresistible. With the help of a scout who acts as den chief, the younger boys carry on their den activities under the general supervision of the den mother. Besides everyday backyard activities, there is a weekly meeting of the cub den at the home of the den mother, where the cubs can work on their achievements and have a good time together under unobtrusive parental supervision. The cub master, who is a leader of boy leaders and of parents, directs the general activities of the pack, working through the den chiefs and the den mothers. With the den chiefs, the cub master works out plans for the monthly pack meeting, a circus, or a handicraft exhibit. It's at the monthly pack meeting that parents are able to see the cub handicraft, meet with the officers of the pack, and with other parents. Sometimes the parents meet together with the cub master and den mother to learn of pack plans. In other words, the parents are almost as much a part of the pack as the cub, and they progress with him through the program. This keeps mother and dad acquainted with cubbing and helps the cub to maintain his interest. Many of the cubbing activities are deliberately planned to include the parents, and in this way, strengthen the ties between parent and child. Dad and mother have a common basis for activities with their son, and so a common ground for understanding each other. And believe it or not, dad enjoys it as much as the boy. Cubbing is full of fun, but along with the fun, the cub is expected to live up to the cub motto, do your best. At 12 years of age, a boy is eligible to become a scout. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. By wearing the scout badge and uniform, the scout informs the world that he has assumed the obligations of a scout. He is accepted by other boys who have given the same promise. Thus, through the natural gang, does the boy learn desirable behavior. The patrol is the working unit of scouting. Groups of eight boys or less develop their own traditions, select their own leaders, and carry on the activities of scouting as a small democratic group. Boys enjoy planning together and then learning to assume active responsibility in carrying out these plans. Scouting is thus learning by doing in the best sense of the word. The boy's character develops as a result of what he does and thinks, rather than through the preaching of adults. Through these common experiences which they enjoy together, the members of a patrol come to be a close-knit group, teaching each other and learning the value of democratic cooperation. The scouting philosophy is that boys are fundamentally good, and if provided with wholesome activities where groups of boys can face problems together with the scout oath and law to guide them, 
they will develop wholesome character traits. On the shoulders of the patrol leader rests the responsibility for directing his group. He must learn to be resourceful and dependable if the patrol is to succeed. The scout master is really a leader of boy leaders. Together with the patrol leaders and other troop officers, he plans the major activities of the troop and teaches the young leaders how to carry out these plans. The wise scoutmaster deliberately plans situations where boys do things on their own. He brings out the best in each scout through skillful use of the scout program. Careful record is made of the scout's progress. Although he is encouraged to move up the scouting trail at his own rate of speed, and the significant thing is that through this whole process, he is learning to be self-reliant. Although to the boy, scouting is a game, a great deal of training and planning goes on behind the scenes. Campsites must be made safe and facilities provided. The local council camping and activities committee aids in this way. All this contributes to the greatest asset scouting has. Boys like it. Food cooked over a campfire. Games with their buddies. These are the things that make scouting the greatest game in the world for boys. Studies show that more than three out of four boys would become scouts if they had a chance. Every real boy likes what scouting has to offer. Hundreds of thousands more could enjoy these helpful character building activities if there were enough troops to take care of them. But before boys can become scouts, troops must be organized and troops cannot be organized without capable, trained leaders and interested sponsoring institutions. Thus, the fun of scouting comes to boys because men cooperate and make it possible. Parents of scouts enjoy the game too. There is real joy in seeing the things that your boy has made and visiting the camporee under his guidance. Although all may not be pie and cake for dad on the father and son's hike. Like a trail leading to high adventure, the Scout Advancement Program beckons the boy upward toward greater achievement. The requirements for second class rank have been deliberately designed to teach the Tenderfoot Scout self-reliance and service to others. Fire building, cooking without utensils, tracking in the woods, and thrift are among the requirements he must meet before he is qualified to wear the second class badge. This badge announces to the world that the scout is ready and willing to serve others. He is now ready to pursue his next objective. More advanced requirements are before the boy who wishes to qualify as a first class scout. Advanced first aid, more skillful cooking, ability to handle an axe, and the 14-mile hike. These are among the things expected of the candidate for the first class rank.
Boris badge program opens up a whole new field of exploration to the scout. From more than a hundred different subjects covering hobbies, scouting skills, service projects, and pre-vocational experiences, the scout can gain a rich background. For the star rank, the scout chooses the five subjects that appeal to him most. Besides acquiring merit badges, the scout must do the following things to advance in rank. First, actually put into practice in his daily life the ideals and principles of the scout oath and law, the motto, be prepared, and the daily good turn. Second, maintain an active service relationship to scouting. And third, make an effort to develop and demonstrate leadership ability. For life rank, the scout must attain 10 merit badges, but five badges are in required subjects, namely first aid, physical development or athletics, personal health, public health, and one of the following three, life-saving, pioneering, or safety. By becoming an Eagle Scout, the boy reaches the highest rank in scouting. But there are many new adventures ahead for the boy who maintains an active interest. All during his scout experience, the boy is guided by the scout oath and law. The scoutmaster, keeping in constant touch with those who know the boy, determines whether or not the scout has lived up to the scout oath and law as he progresses from one rank to the other. By doing this, he can make his recommendations to the local council on the basis of first-hand knowledge of the boy's behavior. The daily good turn has always been associated with the Boy Scout. Through his practice of this tradition, the Scout comes to know the joy of serving others and his obligations to his fellow men. But of all else, the Boy enjoys the out of doors most. The fields bathed in sunshine, the smell of wood smoke, the shady trails through the woods, the dive into clear, cool water. These are the things that make life truly worth living. have built cities around our youth and taken these priceless treasures away from them. But scouting has been devised to give these things back to their rightful owners. As boys grow into young men, their interests change. They seek new adventure, new companions, new worlds to conquer. Senior Scouting offers the Scout these opportunities. After taking the Senior Scout pledge, the Scout may remain with the troop, assisting with special activities and following the Merit Badge program. These responsibilities give him an opportunity to develop his own interests and at the same time assist his younger fellow Scouts. 
Any number of senior scouts can in this way carry on advanced scouting activities as regular members of the troop, assisting the scout master, but also pursuing their own advanced scouting interests. For those who are interested in the lore of the sea, there's the popular Sea Scout program, with its snappy uniform and wholesome nautical activities. The Sea Scouts have an enviable record of service and adventure, and experience shows that the interest of older boys is strong in this program. It is little wonder that young men like this kind of scouting. Every wholesome interest has some outlet through this program as the boy develops into the young man of tomorrow. For those young men who wish to pursue other activities, there is the Explorer Scout Program, an advanced form of scouting that takes the scout on more extended camping trips and gives him an opportunity to explore little-known trails after the proper training and preparation. Explorer Scouts, with equipment they have made themselves, search out the little-known wilderness trails after new adventure. Because of their knowledge and skill, they are valuable to the Scoutmaster as instructor. Far from the bustle of civilization, these older scouts taste the real wilderness and know how to take care of themselves because of their intensive scout training. Winter or summer, senior scouts are on the trail, pursuing the traditions of their pioneer forefathers, exploring new horizons of life. Rover scouting begins at the age of 18. Rover is active and keeps the good turn tradition alive by serving scouting and other worthy causes. As an assistant scoutmaster, the young man 18 years of age or over helps the troop. Somewhere in this land, every adult citizen of tomorrow is today wearing knee breeches. The responsible positions in the decades to come will be filled by the tousle-headed youngsters now in our schools, homes, churches, and scout troops. Youthful hands will take over the controls after the Grim Reaper has called the men of today to their just rewards. America will be theirs, and our system of government will live or die according to the legacy we pass on to them. If democracy is to live, then youth must believe in it as a way of life. And youth cannot believe unless there is hope and security and understanding of what democracy really is. The Boy Scouts of America offers a program to the institutions of America to fill this need. <laughs>